run for cover But the miracle that I just speak it over My name is registered in heaven Signs and wonders Resurrection power Still the miracle that I just can't get over My name is registered in heaven Oh, my praise belongs to you forever This is my testimony from death to life just grace rewrote my story I'll testify By Jesus Christ the righteous I'm justified This is my testimony This is my testimony testimony from death to life this grace rewrote my story I'll testify by Jesus Christ the righteous I'm justified this is my testimony oh my life this is my testimony from death to life this grace rewrote my story I'll testify by Jesus Christ the righteous, I'm justified. This is my testimony. This is my testimony. Amen, amen. Good morning and happy new year. Good to see all of you this morning. You can have a seat this morning and on your way to your seat, you can wave at someone. Say hi and happy new year. My name is Pastor Matt and it's my privilege to welcome you to CLA this morning, uh, both here in person and online. And if you're here or there, you can text hello to the number that's on your screen, 717 717- 4825994 and that helps us to connect with you gives us a record of your visit. We're so glad that you're with us this morning. We were all together online last Sunday. Wasn't that great? Great experience to be together and apart. Yeah. I want to thank Pastor Scott for all of his hard work on our online campus. I want to encourage you to visit our online bulletin uh, either through the website or the app and that'll help you Know what's going on here at CLA, and there's a lot coming up in this new year. 
Uh, we have new classes starting this uh, Wednesday, I believe, including a, a class in Spanish, which I'm going to attend. Uh, I'm literally looking forward to it. Also, this next Sunday, we have an information meeting about the Easter celebration. <laughs> Pastor Dan's excited about all of you that are going to come out, that want to be a part, both on stage, backstage, behind the scenes, tech, all of that, to make Easter celebration a success, a great outreach, just like Christmas Wonderland, but more pastel colors. <laughs> going to be great. Also, we have baptism coming up uh, at the end of the month. If you uh, have recently made a commitment to follow Jesus, uh, it is a great way to express that through baptism. So January 29th, in both services, uh, we will have baptism, and you can register on the website. Let's stand again and, and pray together as we enter back into worship. Lord, we are so thankful for all that you've been doing in our lives, all that you've done in 2022, and we're looking forward to this new year today. Lord, we can't think of a better way to start it off than in your presence. So Lord, we welcome you not only into this, into this room, but into our lives, into our hearts. Speak to us today, Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen. There's something different about coming together to worship the first day of a new year. It shouldn't be any different because every day should be lived as fervently as any other day, right? But there's something about that, that reset button that looking back and celebrating what has happened and looking forward to how God will flow through us and use us in the new year. But this first song we're going to sing just really reminds us that we have a testimony, that we have a, a story to tell. And as we look back, yes, there may have been some challenging times, there may have been some amazing times, a mixture of both, but can we look back and just say, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. We are, we are here today, unscathed, maybe maybe bruised here and there, but we're here today because of your faithfulness. We're here today because you walked with us. We have a story to tell because, God, you're faithful, right? As we worship this morning and look forward to a, a, a new year ahead of us, can we first just say, God, thank you that we have a testimony, that you've been near, that you will never leave us or forsake us. And you're going to be with us in the days ahead. We know you've been faithful to us in the past. And because of that, we know you'll be faithful to us in the future. You're the same yesterday, today, and forever. You never change. Amen? So let's give it to the Lord right now and say, God, thank you for all you've done. And we thank you in advance by faith for what you will do in this new year ahead of us.
you in this place today. 
You've always been faithful. Your goodness is overwhelming. We bless you in this place this morning. Thank you for your faithfulness in the past. You'll be faithful in the future. I'm calling on the God of Jacob, whose love endures for generations. And I know that you will keep your covenant. I'm calling on the God of Moses, the one who opened up. testimony today. Just cry out to him in this place this morning. Oh God, my God, I need you. Oh God, my God, I need you now. How I need you now. Oh rock, oh rock of ages, I'm standing on your today.
your sincere prayer this morning. moments right now just to make this a house of prayer. We close ourselves in, forget about anyone around you on either side of you. Maybe you're watching online and you're somewhere not in a church building, but you'd acknowledge in these moments, God, I need you. God, I can't walk this road without you. I'm desperate for you, Lord. And just offer that simple prayer to him right now. We've sung of his faithfulness and his goodness. He's the same yesterday, today, and forever. He will never change. He is a faithful God. And I think he loves to hear the cry of our hearts when we say, God, I, I need you. I'm desperate for you, Lord. Come near. Oh, God, my God, I need you. Oh, God, my God, I need you. Standing on your faithfulness, on your faithfulness. Oh God, my God, I need you. Oh God, my God, I need you now. How I need you now. Oh rock, oh rock of ages, I'm standing on. God, we commit to that right now, that our feet are firmly planted on the solid rock who is Jesus. Not on sinking sand, but on the solid rock that can never fail us, that can, can never let us down, that can never wash away, can never give way. We cling to you. And maybe that's a, a continued commitment for some, but a fresh commitment to others right now, saying, God, maybe I, my life has been on, on shifting sand and not founded on, on the rock on you, but today and the days to come, I want it to be firmly planted on the rock of Jesus. I cling to you, Lord. And Lord, we thank you for all that you will do. By faith, we thank you in advance for your faithfulness to us in the future for your goodness that we know will continue. May we, may we be faithful. May we do our part to honor you, to bless you, to lift your name up, to celebrate your goodness, your greatness, and who you are. We love you. We praise you. We need you. Walk with us as we choose to walk closely to you, Lord. In Jesus' name, we give you all the praise. And everyone said, Amen. Can we give the Lord one more hand of praise this morning? He is worthy. What a great God. Amen. Isn't it good to be here in the house of the Lord this morning? Come on, Happy New Year. Why don't you go ahead and grab a seat and turn to your neighbor and say Happy New Year. Even if they're across the way, say Happy New Year. I don't know if you're like me, that song is really special because... I need the same God to do something so powerful in the year 2023. In fact, I need more of God than what I did in 2022. I need more of who he is in 2023. I don't know, is anybody else out there with me that needs more of God in 2023? Well, it's so good to be here this morning. And my name's Adam, I'm the student pastor, and it is such an honor and a privilege to be here today. And um, it is New Year's. Anybody make any New Year's resolutions? 
Uh, some people may be out there. Well, very good. Well, again, we're really excited that you're here with us today. If you're watching online, welcome, and thanks for joining us. Uh, I wanna just say thank you so much for your continual generosity in your giving towards the kingdom of God. Uh, every week we allow the opportunity really to be faithful back to what God has already given us. Everything that I have is not my own, it's actually God's and he's just given it to me um, and out of honor and out of respect and out of faithfulness, um, I give just 10% back and that's part of what tithe is and what scripture talks about biblically as we continue to be faithful towards the Lord. And so I just wanna say thank you, man. Your giving continually changes the lives of people around the world. And so it is such an honor and a privilege to give to the kingdom of God. I don't have to do it, I get to give back to the Lord and see his incredible power and work go throughout the world. Would you pray with me over our offering this morning? Jesus, we, we submit to you, Lord. We thank you so much for who you are. God, I pray that today as we give out of cheerful hearts, Lord, and out of our openness, we pray that you would bless everything that's given and that you would bless the giver, Lord. Jesus, we love you. We give back to your kingdom knowing that it's, not just something that's biblical, Lord, but also, Lord, something that we desire to do because we get to do something so incredible like that. God, we love you, we praise you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen, amen, amen. Well, it's so good to be here this morning. Uh, today, I wanna take a couple moments in the new year, 2023, to take a, just a few minutes and talk about our faith. This might be a little different than maybe you've heard uh, about faith before, but I believe this, that in the year 2023, if our faith and our hearts are in the right spot, I believe that God can do something incredible in and through your life. And maybe you're here and you've made some New Year's resolutions and and maybe some of those were faith oriented and some of them were not, I would go ahead and just challenge you today to say, what are some resolutions or what are some goals or what are some things you're striving for when it comes to your faith in the new year? Because the thing is this, this will be your best year yet if it is your best year spiritually. Well, this will be, I'm gonna say it again because maybe you're expecting something else, but this will be your best year yet if it is your best year spiritually. It says this, but seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all will be added unto it. This can be and will be your best year yet. I wanna ask you today, what are some things that you're striving for in faith in the year 2023? Well, if you're taking notes this morning, which I hope that you are, you can write down the title of this message. I don't have too many notes today, but the title is simply this, get out of the boat. Get out of the boat. There's a kayak behind me. I'm gonna be using this as an illustration here in a little bit, but get out of the boat. We're gonna be talking about a familiar passage of scripture that you probably read. And if you're not a Christian, you've probably heard of before, but the title in, is Get Out of the Boat. And we're gonna be reading out of Matthew chapter 14. If you have your Bibles, you can open there. We'll be reading there here in just a moment. But I wonder if anybody has something called a bucket list in your life. Does anybody have a bucket list? Raise your hand if you've got a bucket list. If you're online, why don't you shoot in the chat? I've got a bucket list. Uh, I wonder how many people have some pretty intense things on their bucket list. Now, if you don't know what a bucket list is, it's simply like goals that you hope to reach or attain certain milestones in your life. And a lot of people have something on their bucket list like I did, like skydiving. Now, anybody out there ever been skydiving before? Raise your hand if you've been skydiving, the few and the proud. So this used to be on my bucket list because I have skydove, if I guess that's what you say. Uh, and, uh, but one of the crazy things that prevented me from doing skydiving a lot for a long period of time was simply just the fear of heights. Now, if you're like me, Adam and heights don't really mesh well together. In fact, there are times, now, now I do, I am someone that loves to accomplish and, and take hold of the fear in my life. And so if I'm on top of like a building or like on a, on a roof, just like on, on our house, right? It's like 10 feet in the air. I'll like do this, this number and I'll look over the side and I'll be like, okay, I think I'm good. And like a gust of wind comes and I'm like, oh no, not me. <laughs> but heights and me don't really mesh 
two well together. And skydiving in particular, you're putting your life in the hands of someone who is not perfect because they're not Jesus. So someone who is a fallible person who is packing your parachute in hopes that it will open up in the middle of 10,000 to 15,000 feet in the air. Now, I didn't go by myself, I'm tandem with someone else, but still that doesn't negate the issue that this parachute might not open and as I'm coming down, if it doesn't open, I'm seeing Jesus sooner than I thought I would. Skydiving, it could be the 10,000 to 15,000 feet that I'm jumping from. It could be the parachute not opening. I don't know what really kept me from so long, but it probably is the fear of something happening to my life that hopefully wouldn't happen. And maybe you're here today and you would say, I've got a few things on my bucket list. I wanna swim with sharks or maybe you're a big shark person and you love swim, you know, you'd love to swim with sharks or bungee jump off of a cliff or free dive or do something really intense or crazy. And oftentimes what prevents us from doing something that seems impossible at the time is a fear and a lack of trust because what we see in front of us is a bigger thing than we can handle on our own. I wanna share just a little bit today of how our impossible is God's possible. I wanna give you a little background of the passage of scripture. We'll be reading actually what's prior to this passage, which will set up what we're going to be reading here in Matthew chapter 14. So what's happening beforehand is Jesus just found out that a significant person to him just passed away, so John the Baptist. So Jesus, he goes alone to a secluded area and a crowd of people start to follow Jesus. This crowd of people, they're in need of healing from a variety of sicknesses. So Jesus... He stops and he has compassion to heal them. And as the evening sets in, the disciples tell Jesus, Jesus, send away, all, send away these people. We just need some time to eat and just to rest a little bit. And Jesus says in response to the disciples telling Jesus to send them away, Jesus then says to them, why don't you feed them? This is a familiar passage of scripture probably to most of us. This is the feeding of the 5,000 or more accurately, probably 10 to 15,000 people. So Jesus take five, takes five loaves and, of bread and two fish and he does a miraculous work and feeds closer to 15 to 20,000 people. And this is where we pick up in the passage of scripture in Matthew chapter 14 verse 22 through 31. If you wanna stand this morning as we read God's word together, as we read it, follow along with me. Hopefully you've got it in your Bibles. If not, it'll be on the screen behind me and it says this. Immediately after this, so just what we, we had just talked about, immediately after this, Jesus insisted that his disciples get back into the boat and cross to the other side of the lake while he sent the people home. After sending them home, he went up into the hills by himself to pray. Night fell while he was there alone. Verse 24, meanwhile, the disciples were in trouble far away from land for a strong wind had risen and they were fighting heavy waves. About three o'clock in the morning, and this says about three o'clock because it said, uh, scholars would say that it's between uh, the times of three and 6 a.m. in the morning, and you'll see why, and we'll, we'll talk about that just a little bit here in a moment. But about three o'clock in the morning, Jesus came toward them walking on the water. When the disciples saw him walking on the water, they were terrified. In their fear, they cried out, it's a ghost! But Jesus spoke to them at once, don't be afraid, he said. Take courage, I am here. Then Peter called to him, Lord, if it is really you, you gotta love the audacity of Peter. Lord, if it is really you, tell me to come out onto the water, walking, tell me to come out towards you walking on the water. Yes, come, Jesus said. So Peter went over the side of the boat and walked on the water toward Jesus. But when he saw the strong wind and waves, he was terrified and began to sink. Save me, Lord, he shouted. Jesus immediately reached out 
and grabbed him. You have so little faith, Jesus said. Why did you doubt me? Would you pray with me this morning? Jesus, we commit the rest of this service for the next 20 minutes or so to you. Lord, I pray that you would come alive in a way, Lord, that is far beyond my communication skills, far beyond my study. I pray that you would reveal, Lord, your heart and your life change that comes through knowing your word. God, we love you, we praise you. In your name we pray, amen, amen. You could have a seat this morning. This is such an exhaustive day for Jesus and the disciples. They had done ministry. It is three to 6 a.m. in the morning. The reason why it is uh, probably between those hours is because for them to have seen Jesus walking on the water in the dead of night at 3 a.m., dead of night or morning, whatever it is to you. Some of you, it's morning. Some of you, it's evening. But nonetheless, uh, it is really dark out. And so it's probably more towards when there's a little bit more of light, scholars would say. But this is an exhaustive time of their lives, an exhaustive day. And at 3 a.m. in the morning, Jesus strolls up, walking on water, going toward the disciples. Now, if this is me and it's 3 a.m. in the morning, I'm gonna freak out just a little bit. Like, looking at someone walking on, this is why they thought it was a ghost, because no mere human could ever walk on water. This is something literally from the Pirates of the Caribbean. Like, people are, he is, Jesus is on the water. The disciples are a little nervous about what's happening here. And like I said before, if it's me at 3 a.m. in the morning, and maybe you, uh, I have a son that's two years old, and he was waking up at 3 3 a.m. in the morning at some points, and I would wake up with a cold sweat and say, oh my gosh, the house is on fire. Like, I don't know, I hallucinate at 3 a.m. in the morning, it's just not a good time for me, or four, or five, or six a.m. in the morning, for that matter. But Jesus says then, don't be afraid, it's me. So Peter says, Jesus, if it's you, let me walk on the water with you. Peter starts to walk on the water. I wanna pause for a second and I wanna give you a little bit of the background of the life of Peter so we can understand this contextually a little bit more because I believe this, as we understand where Peter came from, we can start to realize that walking on water and the impossibilities that we may see in our life, Jesus can use us to do some of the most incredible things just like Peter in this passage of scripture. Most of us, we know Peter to be someone that did some pretty remarkable things underneath the leadership of Jesus. But I wonder if Peter ever felt less significant in his early and more formative years. See, when Peter was first called to be a disciple by Jesus, scholars would say he's between the ages of 16 and 19 years old. Now, in Jewish culture, what would happen is a 13-year-old, would, their life would be decided by re- the religious elite. So the religious elite would take a 13-year-old and they would deem them intelligent or worthy enough to continue in their education and do something more aspired or become a better part of society. And if they deem them not worthy enough or not intelligent enough, what would happen to the 13-year-old is they would assume the responsibility of of their family in which they had already had a trade underway. So Peter being 16 to 19 years old and being a fisherman shows us that at the early and more formative parts of Peter's life, at 13 years old, he experienced rejection and that he wasn't good enough to continue the education and become more prominent in society. In fact, they told Peter, and this is what scholars would deduce because he was a fisher, that because he was a fisherman, he took up the trade of what his family was doing. Peter, at a very early age, he experienced rejection. He wasn't chosen. Furthermore, Peter, between the ages of 16 and 19, was a professional fisherman. A professional fisher never came up empty. And in fact, if they did, 
they would put their, the, the fishermen would put their family at a financial deficit because the family was reliant on the, on the family trade, specifically fishing, for them to come up with fish every single day. So we see this happening here. In the moment where Jesus is calling Peter to be a disciple, Peter shows up without fish. It's an embarrassment. He probably feels disappointed and a little bit like a failure, yet Peter, call, yet Jesus calls Peter to follow him and become a disciple. I wanna pause for just a moment again and kind of like retract for just a second. I think it's pretty crazy that Jesus called Peter to be a disciple and to follow him at the age of 16 to 19 years old. I think this shows us a little bit of what Jesus believes about the youth and the young people in our culture today, that young people can be influencers for Jesus in the culture that we live in. So I don't know if you're a parent or I don't know if you're a grandparent, yeah, come on. Because here's the deal, we should be pouring a lot of our effort and a lot of our, 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 our energy into helping young people see the life that they can have in Jesus because Peter, he didn't, he wasn't 20 years old. He wasn't 30 years old when Jesus called him. He was 16 to 19 years old. He wasn't even fully formed mentally is what research would tell us today. Yet Jesus called him. And we are learning from, in scripture from a teenager. How incredible is that? So, I want this to help serve a reminder to you because in this moment that Jesus is calling Peter to be a disciple, he is experiencing disappointment, failure, and embarrassment. Yet, despite the disappointment and the rejection that Peter had felt and had experienced in his life, Jesus chose Peter. Let this serve as a reminder to you that even if you experience disappointment in your life, even if you're in the middle of experiencing rejection or a long time ago uh, in your past, you've experienced these things, that does not negate that Jesus wants to use you. In fact, Jesus sees you in your disappointments, Jesus sees you in the hardship, and he wants to meet you. Jesus raises us, he chooses us, he gives us value, and Jesus gives value to those that society deems invaluable. Peter didn't need to worry about making something of himself because Jesus was going to make something out of Peter. Listen, you'll never make something out of yourself like Jesus will make out of you. If Jesus used Peter, he certainly can use me. If Jesus used Peter, he certainly can use you. First thing, if you're taking notes, is this faith to step outside of the boat. Faith to step outside of the boat. Honestly, I don't know what Peter was thinking. If it were me, I probably would have just stayed in the boat. But I think that this shows us a glimpse of Peter and his belief and his level of trust in Jesus when it comes to the impossible. Peter heard it was Jesus Peter knew it was Jesus, so Peter took a step towards the impossible right in front of him. If you're like me, um, I, I, I oftentimes, and oftentimes probably isn't most accurate, all of the time, if I go swimming, I do my best before I go swimming to walk on water. <laughs> Come on, anybody ever tried to walk on water before? Yeah, you can be honest for a second. So when I'm at the pool, whether it's someone's house or around the neighborhood, um, I always, before I get it, I'm like, Jesus, this is the time. Here we go. I put my foot right on top of the water. I'm like, this is the day. And I sink right into the water every single time. You know, Lincoln and I, my son, he's two. Uh, when we go on a walk and it's just raining, there's little puddles. I'm like, buddy, today's the day. Here we go. And I do one of those like skips, you know, like, oh. I did it, yeah. And uh, you know, it makes me think though of the physical impossibilities in our world, right? It's physically impossible for us to walk on water. But I think that this might show us a little bit uh, and give us a picture that maybe you might be going through something that you would consider impossible. 
But if you hear the voice of Jesus clearly, we would understand that the impossible for us is a possibility for Jesus. We would understand that the impossible for us is just simply an opportunity that it is a setup for Jesus to prove himself to be faithful and righteous in his goodness. I wonder today if you're facing something so difficult in your life where you are in your boat of life and the waves are coming all around you. The waves are coming right in front, the left and the right, and you just wanna sit in the boat because you feel comfortable and getting out of the boat is really difficult for you to do. Maybe today you're facing relationship issues. Maybe today you're facing addiction. Maybe today you're facing something that no one else knows about, but you'll never experience the victory that Jesus wants you to experience if you stay in the boat. Peter had to get out of the boat to walk on the problem that was right in front of him. Now from the boat, you can see the waves and the problems around you. But while you're in the boat, you must be reminded that you were never created to stay in the boat and fear what is outside of the boat. You were created not to have a spirit of fear, but of power, love, and a sound mind. You were not meant to stay in the boat, but you were meant to walk on the issues that are outside of the boat. So what did Peter do? He heard Jesus and he took a step outside of the boat and started to walk on the water. How did Jesus get out of the boat and come on the water? Because he knew Jesus was going to be with him. How do you walk through the issues of your life? How do you go through the hardship? Because you know Jesus is gonna be with you. How do you walk on top of him? Because Jesus is with you. I wonder today, If maybe problems are surrounding you and you don't know what to do, I'm here to tell you it's time to get out of the boat and trust in Jesus. In fact, Jesus is calling you to trust him and focus on him and to walk through the issues together because you will never find the victory that you were meant to find in Jesus if you just simply stay in the boat. What's it going to take you to take your first step of faith and trust Jesus in the circumstance in front of you. Jesus says, don't be afraid, it's me. Don't be afraid of what's in front of you because Jesus is with you. Taking a step outside of the boat for you might mean that you need to get some counseling in your life to face some, face some of the issues. For you today, getting outside of the boat and maybe you're not, maybe you don't have these waves and storms around you right now, but I promise you this, it's the world that we live in, there will be at some point and it's what you do in that moment that matters the most. Maybe for you, getting out of the boat might mean getting prayer this morning. Maybe for you, getting out of the boat might mean telling someone about the secret thing in your life that no one else knows about that you've been holding on for far too long. Maybe for you, it's getting a part of an accountability group. Or maybe for you, it's finding a group that can be supportive of the things that you're going through. I don't know what it is necessarily for you, but what is it? that you can do to allow God to help you walk through the situations that you're involved in. If it's your past, the past was never meant to keep you in the past. The past was meant to propel you towards the future. Look no further than the beginning, more formative portion of the life of Peter. He had rejection, disappointment, he didn't provide for his family in that instance, and yet Jesus called him to greater things and he allowed the past to catapult him and do some incredible things in his future. He didn't let failure keep him down, he didn't let rejection keep him down, he allowed Jesus to propel him forward. How can we learn from Peter and be determined to get out of the boat? 
The second thing is this, if you're taking notes this morning, trusting in Jesus, trusting Jesus after stepping out of the boat. Come on, trusting in Jesus, trusting Jesus after stepping out of the boat. In the second part of verse 29, it'll be on the screen, I believe. In the second part of verse 29, uh, Matthew chapter 14, 29, it says this. So Peter went over the side of the boat and walked on the water towards Jesus. But when he saw the strong wind and the waves, he was terrified and began to sink. Save me, Lord, he shouted. Jesus immediately reached out and grabbed him. You have so little faith, Jesus said, why did you doubt me? Now, I don't know about you, but if I'm Peter and I'm stepping outside of the boat, that's not a little faith. Like stepping and walking on water, that seems to be a lot of faith for me. But sometimes when we step out of the boat, we have full intentions of trusting in Jesus the whole way through, but then when we start to lose focus and we start to lose sight of Jesus and we start to look down instead of up, now our situation becomes a little more overwhelming than we thought it was. But Jesus, I stepped out of the boat out of faith because I trusted you. I would go to say this, that stepping out of the boat is the easy part and takes less faith. It's walking through the difficulty where Jesus is going to come through for you, where you will come on top and see victory. Peter, he starts to walk on water, but Peter lacked persistent faith to keep him above the water. Jesus says, you have so little faith, why did you doubt me? See, the danger in this scenario, it wasn't the waves and the violent winds, but the little faith. Your circumstances and my circumstances, they aren't dangerous against the power of God. It's the amount of faith and obedience that we have that becomes the danger. I wonder if we have persistent faith in 2023. If I could have the keys come up as I start to close this morning. I wonder if you've ever tried to create a healthy habit in your life and found it difficult. I can remember before Katie and I moved here, uh, we had a pretty routine schedule of working out. We enjoyed it. We would go work out like two to three times a week. When we moved here, COVID hit, and I don't even know what the gym looks like inside anymore. Um, uh, the only thing I've been working out is actually my stomach with the Christmas chocolate chip cookies. Anybody out there like the chocolate chip cookies? I'm the only one. All right. Uh, and, uh, and to be honest with you, um, creating a healthy habit isn't the easiest thing. But in one way or another, we're creating habits in life. Whether intentional or unintentional, you're creating a habit. Whether it's a good habit or a bad habit, habits are being created in your life. Creating a heart or creating a good habit doesn't often times come to be easy. And I think about it like this. When we create a good habit or a healthy habit and then difficulty comes, now we have a good and healthy habit to fall back on in our lives. And I think this translates in the same way to our spiritual life. See, in the same way, it isn't natural for us as humans to trust in Jesus during unrestful moments of life because we want to do it all ourselves. We've adopted and we've given into this self-dependence model which sets us up on a course for destruction and failure. In fact, if we wanna step out of the boat, that oftentimes is the easy part, but it's the consistency in our trust, in our faith that makes failure so prevalent. Most of us would consider Peter an incredible guy that did remarkable things underneath the leadership of Jesus, but he sank. It's the persistency that 
that matters. It can be really easy for me for one time to be like, Jesus, I'm trusting you. Here I go, stepping out of the boat. Yes. I'm walking, I'm doing good. All right, Jesus, enough self-dependency. I'm good, I'm walking. I feel like I'm strong enough. I can do it myself. And you start to sink and then you wonder, where is Jesus? Peter's issue wasn't the initial trust. It was the consistent and persistent trust. Jesus took his, or or Peter took his eyes off of Jesus and put it on his circumstance. The facts are the facts though. Jesus, he never fails. So when we're connected to Jesus, we will never fail. But the problem is when we find ourselves in this Peter-like situation and we trust Jesus enough to get out of the boat, but not the whole way to sustain us, through the storm. And then most times, if we do trust in Jesus enough to sustain us through the storm, we then just forget to depend on Jesus because we're through the storm of life. In 2023, my question to you is, what does persistent faith look like? Are you getting out of the boat in your life And then are you trusting Jesus through anything and everything that might come your way? Healthy habits are hard to build, but when you start building a healthy habit and trusting in Jesus in every situation, then the waves and the winds don't seem as terrifying anymore. Because you start to realize that when waves come and when troubles persist, Jesus has always come through like he said he would. His promises are true. He's always there for me. He's the alpha, the omega. He's the first and the last. He's the prince of peace. He's the healer. He's the redeemer. He's the provider. He's everything that you need and more. Doesn't matter who you are or where you come from. If you're obedient in what God is calling you to do, he will help you, he will heal you, he will redeem you, he will restore you, he will cover you, he will keep you, he will hold you. My obedience to God has to be stronger than my focus on anything else. Rest assured, Jesus didn't let Peter drown, but Peter did call out for help. Let me tell you something this morning, the life that we live can't be me-centric. It can't be about me or one way or another, we'll drown. Can you imagine Peter in that moment not calling out to Jesus? Well, surely he would have gone under. Do you need to call on Jesus this morning? Maybe you've been trying to navigate things through your life and maybe you need to call on Jesus this morning because you're in the middle of a desperate situation like Peter was and you need to call on Jesus. Jesus, help. Maybe you're here this morning and nothing is going to awry in your life. But you know when things come, faith is hard to stand by. Difficult things, you don't look to Jesus for the first, to, to, to be the first help. You kind of just weave him in there. Maybe this morning you're facing something and you need an increase of faith to be sustained through the storm of life. Maybe you're in the middle of something and it's staring you down, but Jesus wants to give you victory. Victory might not look like an immediate healing. Victory might not look like an immediate response. Can Jesus do it? Yes. But I know that his plans are greater than my plans and his plans 
might be when I call on him to take me through it, not above it. Because as I go through something, then Jesus affirms himself within me. And now I have a story to share with people around me. If you would this morning stand as we close today. I just simply wanna ask a few questions to you this morning and maybe you're online today and something in your life is happening and you need Jesus to come through for you. This is as much for you as it is for the people in the room today. This morning, I wanna simply ask, do you know who Jesus is? If you don't know who Jesus is, surely at one point or another, your life will end and you'll drown. Whether it's at the end of your life and it comes to eternity or whether it's right now in the things that you're dealing with. Jesus is the only lifter that could lift our, our hearts and give us confidence and give us courage in the middle of our struggles. Scriptures say, take courage, have courage, it is I. Maybe today you don't even know who Jesus is, but you wanna know who Jesus is. If you would just bow your head and close your eyes with me, and this is not out of any over spiritual thing, but simply just to be you and Jesus so you could focus, so I could focus on myself and Jesus. If you're here today, and you don't know Jesus, but you want to know Jesus, and you wanna have a relationship with him, you don't even know what that's like, but today you wanna know Jesus more on a personal level, would you just raise your hand for me and I wanna pray for you. Yes, I see that hand. Anybody else today? As I look from the right to the left, anybody else this morning? I wanna ask another question, and that's this. Are you someone that you're in the middle of something or something is coming your way and you know it, it's the beginning of the year and Christmas was great, New Year's is, is fantastic and that's today, but something is coming down the line and you know it or maybe you're dealing with something in your life where you need Jesus, you need him to increase your faith and uh, you need to be more dependent on Jesus yourself than you ever have been before. Maybe that's you this morning. If that's you, would you raise your hand so I know who I'm praying for? So many people. So many people. Come on, would you pray with me? And if you feel comfortable, maybe lifting your hands out of just an act of surrender today. So Jesus, we surrender everything that we are. Lord God, every situation that we might be dealing with, I pray, Lord, that you would help us to not only step outside of the boat, but Jesus, to keep focused and be sustained, Lord, with you through the problems and the storms that will eventually come. Jesus, I pray right now for those who are going through something difficult. I pray, Lord, that you would be with them, Jesus. Make your presence known. Be the, the comfort and the peace, Lord, that we know that you are and that your, your, your word tells us that you are. Jesus, we thank you for who you are. We thank you for everything that you've done for us. In Jesus, we pray this morning that we would leave encouraged and strengthened, knowing that when we call on your name, you are there. You're not distant. You're not far from us. You are close and you wanna speak to us. Jesus, we love you so much. I pray for those who are giving their heart and those who wanna know Jesus in, in a relationship that they haven't had before. God, I pray that today would be a day where they would walk in step with you, Jesus. They would start to know you more, Lord, that they, their faith would be increased, that they would be challenged, Lord, as they walk through their life to have a life that is worthy of you, Lord. We just love you, we praise you, and we thank you, God. You are worthy of everything that we have to offer. Jesus, thank you. We honor you. And Lord, in 2023, we commit to look to you, pursue you, be more persistent than we ever have before. Jesus, I pray that this would be our best year yet because this will be the best year spiritually for us as a church and us as individuals. God, we love you, we honor you, we praise you. In Jesus' name we pray. 
Amen, amen, amen. Come on, can we give God some praise in this place this morning? Hey, before you leave, I wanna encourage you with this. We're gonna do a worship song. You can feel free to leave, but here's the deal. The altars are open. If you've got something to pray for, now's the time to pray. It's the beginning of the year. I wanna challenge you today. If you raise your hand, maybe you raise your hand for salvation. There'll be something on the screen. It's the next steps. Um, That'll be the next steps. We wanna walk with you through that. But if you have something that you're going through and you need some prayer this morning, come on down to the altars. Respond to what Jesus is calling you to do. Don't just stay in the boat. But take a moment and get outside of the boat today. We love you so, so much. We'll see you next week. Don't miss it. Pastor Shane will be back. We love you so much.